So, do you want to feel happy every day? Yes. yes. So do I. This is why I'm up here. This is my passion. I want to make sure that I'm happy every day. Now, think about last Sunday. When you were going to bed, were you a little bit anxious about what was going on on Monday? Were you looking forward to your Monday at work? I know I wasn't. No, seven years ago, that was me. And I just, I had so much anxiety. I was so upset and I didn't want to go to work. Now, I had a great job. I had a great boss, a great co-worker. I was good at what I did. I worked locally, so I had no long commute. By everybody else's thinking, it's like, why are you unhappy? Why are you unsatisfied with what you're doing when you have such a great work environment? But I was miserable. It was to the point that I would be driving to work, driving along and just absolutely dreading it to the point where I would have tears running down my face. Mm -hmm. And I'd be thinking, what the hell am I doing? I hate what I'm doing. And it doesn't matter that I had great coworkers or a great boss. I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't living my true purpose. And I sure as hell was not going anywhere in terms of promotion. I was a law clerk. And when you're a law clerk in Ontario, you can only go as high as being a law clerk. Yes, you can be a senior law clerk, but that's really the top of the level. And I knew I wanted more than what I was doing. So I decided to take it to the next level, which for a law clerk would mean going to law school. Now, I did my LSATs, wrote my big, huge test to get into law school, started my application, but the universe, it knew that that was not the right choice for me. It knew that I was not going to be any happier as a lawyer than as a law clerk. And so fate intervened and I welcomed my fourth child to the world. And between those two events, it led me to my future path. It led me to find my passion, my purpose. And that is in entrepreneurship. So 2007, unhappy. 2008, I'm at home with my new baby and my husband and I decide to launch our own business. Now, we did something really stupid. <laughs> we started a business based on what we already knew, which if you're unhappy with what you know, is not going to make you happy. <laughs> It's just putting you in control of your unhappiness. <laughs> Not a good idea, is it? So what we did is opened a traditional business, something that my husband had been doing for 14 years already. For me, it was the opportunity to get out of my administrative role and into a leadership role because I was running the business, I was doing the operations, I was doing all the outreach and all the stuff that I said, okay, yes, that's what I love doing. I love being in the community. I love doing all that stuff. So that was great, except I still hated the work. <laughs> and even worse, I love my husband very, very much, but I hated working with him. <laughs> now we've been married over 20 years and I still wanted to be married for more. <laughs> so with that in mind, I decided to go back to what I already knew, which was being a law clerk. But what I actually did was put myself back in a situation that made me miserable. This time, my coworkers created a negative atmosphere. And you would walk into the room, so you'd walk into the room and you would see everyone, you would hear them talking and complaining and you would just feel this negative cloud of energy. And you'd go from being all happy and strong to, being absolutely miserable and that was not what I wanted because of that poisonous environment because of that negativity it actually caused me to suffer absolutely daily migraines for over a year I was always sick I was miserable at home I was more irritable my kids suffered my husband suffered because I came home and I was miserable I was depressed I was sad I was crying all the time and it was really tough so something amazing happened and because we had been running our business i was involved in a few different organizations still doing business stuff half time in my spare time because i didn't have spare time i had work and then i had what i loved to do and taking care of my family so 
what happened was in 2014, I ended up in Australia as a delegate for Canada to an entrepreneurship event. And it was there that my perspective really started to change. I learned that the problems we had faced in our business and the problems I saw other entrepreneurs facing in our local community were the same problems all over the world. So any entrepreneur you asked anywhere in the world had trouble finding the information they needed to start their business. They didn't know where to start. They didn't know how to validate their ideas. They didn't know where to find funding or how to fund their business. And they were confused. It also taught me that without a strong community, it was much harder to succeed. You could do it, but it took you a lot longer to get it done. And that is why I developed a system called the Pivot System. It helps you launch into entrepreneurship as a community, as a group, and in an accelerated manner. Now you can do it yourself, and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to run you through the main concepts of the Pivot Program. So when you're leaving your job or whatever you're doing and you want to find something that's more fulfilling, you want to start with P. P stands for passion and purpose. So find something that makes you happy, something that makes you want to get up each day, something that interests you and something that's going to keep you excited about each day of the week. So the next step is identify the pain points. When you're working in your passion, you still want to find out what is causing people pain in that area. So say you're working in maybe a dental office and one of the pain points you've noticed is that you can't stand the sound of that dental drill. Anybody else in the audience hate the sound of the dental drill? <laughs> Not only does it make it very annoying to have your teeth done, it's also very anxiety producing. Mm -hmm. So think about what you could do around that dental drill. How could you take your passion? How could you make it your purpose to solve that pain point? And I don't know why it hasn't been done yet, but let's make a silent dental drill. <laughs> so the next point, validate ideas. When you're validating the idea, you're looking at things where the idea may be absolutely fantastic, but if it cannot be adopted, then the idea is worthless. So I'll use this one example that men, you may not understand quite as well, but woman, you will understand this quite well. So there's a product called Diva Cup. It is a menstrual cup designed to be used instead of tampons and sanitary napkins. Yes, men, I know you're closing your ears. You're like, oh, no, don't talk about that. But it's a great example of validating ideas because we had groups of people who really were passionate about helping women and girls in developing countries be able to go to school. And one of the reasons that they weren't able to go to school as much was because once a month they would have their period and they would have issues because they didn't have sanitary supplies to take care of it. Women in developing countries would even be using mud and twigs at times. Sounds pretty horrible. Females and males will agree. Using muds and twigs for anything to do with your body? Pretty bad. So they thought, well, let's take them the Diva Cup because it's reusable and they can keep reusing it. Great idea. Sounds absolutely great when you first talk about it. But there is one problem. They didn't think about the user design the user experience. And it's something we need to think about with every idea. So in developing countries, one, you don't always have bathrooms. There are a lot of places in India and other countries where people are still trying to get outhouses built. So not even running water. And then running water is another problem. Ladies, you know that periods are messy. Men, you can imagine. And if you don't have running water, how can you use something that might be messy when you don't have access to running water or a toilet? So it didn't solve the problem. And add in the taboos of the countries and you have another problem there. So great idea, 
but not a solution that was able to be activated. So next on our list, we have opportunities. Opportunities are abundant, but we often don't realize the opportunities that are available to us. So when we have a product or an idea, we often think in our little circle, what is commonly known to us. So we're making muffins and we're thinking, well, we can sell them at the bakery. We can sell them to our friends, but what about selling them to a big chain store? What about using your muffins as a way to combat nutrition because your muffins have some type of high protein content and they're gluten-free and vegan and everything else. So where else could you use it? Maybe it's better food at schools. Maybe it's uh, putting it into special holistic markets. Maybe you're shipping your muffins to India or Bangladesh or somewhere to help combat things like night blind blindness. Uh, quick side story, Grameen Danon is a partnership between Muhammad Yunus's Grameen Bank and Danon Yogurt. They developed a very affordable yogurt to treat night blindness in children because night blindness over there was caused by lack of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. By developing this yogurt with lots of vitamins and other minerals in it, they actually were able to resolve a lot of the night blindness. So that's an opportunity you might not think of. You're thinking, well, I'm just creating yogurt or muffins, but how else can that be used? So think outside your box. So you've got your little box. Think out here mm -hmm. because all magic happens outside the box. And whether it's a product or yourself, everything magic happens outside the comfort zone. So, and then the last thing, tactics. In business, we need to use tactics. We need to have a tactic for social media, for marketing, for just developing our business plan. Who's going to run your operations? Who do you need to hire? Who do you need to outsource to? So we need to use our tactics. So we can put this all together into the pivot formula. You can do this all yourself. Or if you want to accelerate faster, you can give me a call. And we have limited spots in our program, but we can help walk you through it in just three days, saving you at least a year of work. And even better, you're going to be in a group. You're going to be supported. You're not going to be me being alone and struggling for over a year just to try and put the pieces together. So if you want to talk more with me, email me at Rebecca at entrelaunch.org. Either way, I want to see you get pivoting. I want to see you pivot your life from a life of unhappiness and dreading Mondays to a life of adventure and satisfaction, one where you're planning your own future and you're impacting the world in a great way. Now, Maestro, I think we need some music. <laughs> now, everyone up. Yeah. Let's feel like this every day.